Perhaps you're right. I would have been satisfied to die here, surrounded by those who carry on Dreykel's will. However, I now realize that somewhere along the way, I forgot how precious life is. You taught me that, Dreykel's. I'll live on, if at the very least, to see you once more. No, all legends must have an end. It's time to lay you to rest. No. Don't you fucking dare. Don't you fucking dare! Wait, are you absorb- No, no, no! You fucking- Coward! How could I have- Who's absorbing what now? It's wings! <laughs> Excellent work, children. With that, the third rivalry is complete. And the Auric Knight has grown in power. I'm gonna fucking kick your ass! Could you? Do you even understand what you've done? It seemed as though no one was interested in these wings, and I didn't want them to go to waste, so I took them for myself. The whole point of the rivalries is to take from one another. Didn't anyone tell you not to let your guard down on a battlefield? Besides, the great war of this era is about to begin. Old legends from bygone days have no place here. No! You make me sick. How could you?! Eusis is mad, and I feel that anger too. Your time is swiftly running out. Soon, the Omen will appear, and Operation Jormungan will begin tomorrow. All the preparations for the war have been finished. Supreme Commander Van Dyke will see to the rest. I will be waiting for you alongside His Excellency at the final stage. I look forward to finishing our little talk there. The final stage? What does that mean? No. Shit, 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 shit. <laughs> to think my end would come like this. My lord! <laughs> no! That wound! Just like what happened to me. <laughs> we end to sleep! My lord! Fuck. It's alright, Rose. My time is already I forgot. Long over. I forgot Rufus did that. Crow. This isn't how it was supposed to be. You said you'd live. Sometimes parents must lie to their children. Forgive me, Duvali, Ines, Anea. Though I never had children of my own, you were all daughters to me. Yeah, I, I did get that impression. Just like with the Jaeger King. My lord. I am truly sorry for all the worry I caused you, Rose. But I am so grateful to have known you, 
My dearest friend, thank you for watching over us, kind-hearted witch. <laughs> you fool. I am the one who should be thanking you. Lady Arsaid, I can think of no one better than you to have inherited the name Sandlot. I am truly happy to have met you. Please, give my farewells to Lord Arsaid and Lady Le Guin as well. I promise I will. Leanne, I'm so sorry. I remember seeing you when you were yet very small. Perhaps it was just my own foolish musings, but I found myself thinking that if I had a son, I would want him to be like you. <sighs> you are the only person who can defeat Ishmelka now. Please, take what little strength I have left. My long journey is finally at its end. Trichos, may we meet again, if the goddess wills it. Of course she dies. She seemed like she knew shit. Ah. And wouldn't be in a position where she would mind telling us to. Ah. Oh, I... That is a great way to make me hate Rufus, by the way. Like, the shit with Crow was so long ago, it, like, I basically forgotten it. This... Are we back? Brings back those feelings, plus some more. It's already morning. <laughs> My lord... Duvali. Don't weep. She lived with courage to the end. Just like the boss. She left this world with no regrets. Well, maybe one big regret at the end, but still. Yeah. And she was able to pass her will on to us. You are correct. She was able to impart a small amount of herself to the Ashen Knight and his blade. Right at the end, they absorb the final fragments of the Argent Knight's power. He looks the same as before, but something feels different about him. So this is the parting gift the Steel Maiden has granted us. Ooh, that's... Was that... A really nice gift. Valimar, you can talk again? Indeed. I'm glad to be able to speak freely once more. Thanks to Argreon and Arian Road, I was finally able to break free from the curse's hold on me. And I'm not the only one. Ooh. Yeah, she really was something else. Oh, you can even project yourself. <laughs> That's... Uh, I can't believe it! Hey, Milliam. Milliam? Is this... really? Milliam! What in the world is going on? It's okay, Ali. I know! It was probably thanks to the Steel Maiden's power. Guess it set me free or something. This is just some kind of astral projection, though. So, it's not my real body. Uh. <sighs> Even so... You show up again acting like nothing happened? Man. That's one hell of a parting gift. Thank you, Steel Maiden. What a truly wonderful gift. <sighs> to 
the very end, you were an unabashed show-off. Farewell, my friend. Oh man, did we miss the main event? Uh, don't you... What, what are your intents right now? You! What is Ouroboros even trying to... Like, what, what moves are they even making at this point? The fool. I was wondering when you'd show up. Are you just supporting him, or...? Oh, don't be like that. I'm not here to pick a fight. I... simply came to say my farewells to a longtime friend. And looks like I'm not the only one. You guys figured that out quickly? Vita! Ren! Joshua! Blue Blanc, too. You were all watching, weren't you? Indeed. This was one of the reasons we agreed to help with the performance. I used my spells to keep an eye on you. I'm glad we were able to catch up. So she's really gone then. The two of us had tea together all the time. And her and Luve's sparring sessions were always a sight to behold. I'm going to miss her. Even when I had completely closed my heart off to the world, she still tried to reach out to me. Things won't be the same without her. Thank you for your kind words. She truly touched a great many lives. <laughs> Ouroboros lost quite a valuable pawn today. It's a shame it was necessary for the rivalries. Oh well. I'm sure the Grandmaster won't mind all that much. Wait, are you...? You've got some balls just showing up here by yourself. Hold on, Ash. Now's not the time. You said you weren't here to fight, right, Campanella? Right. It might be hard to believe, but I'm grieving too. To be honest, though, even I find it a little strange I can feel this way. Life's just full of surprises. Campanella. Just when I think I've got you figured out. Well, since you're here, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. What is this omen the Governor General mentioned? And what did he mean by the final stage? You don't know? Interesting. Now that you mention it... I do remember him saying that. And I'm guessing it has something to do with why McBurn and the Ogre Girl aren't here. <gasps> yeah, something's off. That freak wouldn't miss the chance to see a battle like this. And McBurn and Arian Road were among Ouroboros' longest members. You'd think he'd be here too. He's conspicuous in his absence. I realize he just left the tower, but still, he should have been able to make it here. <laughs> I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. You'll find out the reason why soon enough. Huh? Hey! Ah. <sighs> Everyone, look! Something in the sky... Uh-oh. What was that? Something flashed in the sky. <gasps> Final stage? Instructor! Reen, what's the matter? Uh, I'm fine. But this presence... It's... Yeah, I feel it too. Something big just showed up. That light! There's only one place it could have come from. Yes, there's no doubt about it. Is everyone okay down there? I, for some reason, I figured, uh, more Boris is Courageous up. too! Olivier, is that you? Sorry, there's no time to explain. Please come aboard quickly. Estelle, Lloyd, and the others are with me, too. You don't say. Something strange is happening all over the Empire. You just... Uh, wow. It started in the skies over the Osgiliath Basin. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That makes too much sense. Okay. 
we got a cell and Lloyd with us. Does that mean we're really going to an end game now? Moments ago. Okay. They really tracked down what was happening really quickly. Midwestern Air Pony Skies above the Husky Leith Basin. So this is where I presume they fought way back when, yeah? That is nice and creepy. Can everyone see that? Oh, yeah, uh, they look like eyes. It looks like a hollowed out planet almost. Man, it kind of sucks I didn't get the chance to say goodbye to the Steel Maiden. But I guess coming here was the right choice, huh? Yeah. The party's just getting started. Now that explains why he's so willing to leave. The last time. Is it visible from? It looked fucking huge. Oh, whoa, that looks different. What is that? That does not look like the thing we just saw. That's something extra. Dear. A white spire. It seems familiar. Wait, white? That didn't look... Oh, shit. You don't think... Because crossbell stuff has started showing up in Erebonia, right? North Ambria is part of this place now. It's part of the Empire. You don't think... What? What in the goddess's name? Irina, do you know anything about this? Even I have no idea what's going on now. However... I see. It's not a railway cannon, or even an airship. So this is what they... I, I, I like... A, a random, non-technological looking sort of... pillar thing. What else could it be? say white. I still don't see the white, but... Whoa. So that's it. <laughs> so this is what the fool mentioned. Their ultimate trump card. Huh. I mean, I, I have nothing else that comes to mind at the very least. Either something brand new or... Oh, the mountain range. That's nice. Oh, I can sort of see it now. So that's it. Just like the thing that destroyed Northambria. Oh. Okay, you do. Okay. Okay, that confirms it. That does confirm it. Are these showing up at specific locations, I wonder? No way! Just like we were told. Damn it! What the hell are they doing? Nothing I've seen has made me feel like I recognize any of these places as, like, places of import. Like, some place we've seen other stuff pop up because they're, like, hot spots of the Septian veins and stuff like that. 
Oh, it would be fun if one just showed up like in the middle of a road here. Wouldn't that be fun? They're all away from society at the moment, but... Oh... Fuck, this place can... Oh, no, just there. It's not gonna be a big tower in the middle of the street. Never mind. That's a bit intimidating for them, too. What? What is that thing? It's so huge! Are they gonna assume it's Calvert? Citizens of Heimdall, please remain calm. What you see before you is not here to cause you harm. In fact, it is here to open the door to our future. Allow me to introduce our ultimate weapon in the war against Calvert. Okay, someone's got to question that being introduced as a weapon. Okay, it still looks like a fucking hollowed out fucking planet. Behold, the key to Erebonia's absolute and lasting victory, the Imperial Fortress. Hmm. Pun? Is that a pun? Uh-oh. Is that gonna affect them all? Imperial Fortress? <laughs> so it's on our side? Great! There's no way we'll lose to Calvert now! No. With that thing, we could take on the entire continent! Yeah, it's a fun thought, isn't it? Oh, that's a real fun thought. Long live the Empire of Erebonia! The future belongs to us! I'm trying to find, like, the planet thing makes sense, but I'm not really, like, getting, like, what more would that mean? At last. The Imperial Fortress, built by us gnomes 1,200 years ago. The Tuaha de Danan. That shall be the stage for the final rivalry. Ha <laughs> ha! Excellent. The Imperial Fortress. With that on our side, the Republic doesn't stand a chance. So that's what you'll use to swallow everything up. Until nothing remains. Yes, it will herald the end of the world. Supreme Commander of the Imperial Army, General Van Dyke. It is time we wake the World Serpent. On behalf of His Majesty, I now issue the final order to begin Operation Jormungand. We declare war at 1200 hours tomorrow. The Republic's destruction will soon follow. Oh, he loves that beat, doesn't he? Act 3, Secrets of Dawn, and fun, 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 fun. Interesting. Well then, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm so it was built by the gnomes. So my first instinct was like it's some remnant of the Septarians in some capacity. No, it sounds like it's straight up made by the gnomes. Whatever it is, why ever it has eyes. <laughs> uh, so I guess is the world serpent thing they're mentioning referencing just Jormungandr? I get the idea there. But whenever they say serpent and other stuff like that, I, I always think back to Ouroboros if it could tie in in some capacity. It's probably just Operation Yormengander that they're referencing, unless there's actually something more to that name. <laughs> that Like, there's something more literal to the Yormengander connection outside of the con concept of what they're going to do. Hmm. 
Okay, well, I guess next time. <laughs> You've certainly outdone yourself. Really? That's, uh... Interesting that I sent it. Okay. Good to know. Well then, I think I'll leave it there for today. I'll see y'all next time. Drive safely, everyone. And hello, and welcome back to Trails of Code Steel 4. Let's just continue on. I should now have basically no other series going for at least a week. So... You know, focus heavily on this in the near, near future. Oh, yeah. Speaking of all that, apparently they have announced official localizations of Zero, Azure, Nayuda, and what is going to be called Reverie. So, hype. It's gonna be a while, but hype, basically. It sounds like they basically have been spending a lot of time getting their ducks in a row. Uh, for stuff, and they're going to be releasing a bunch of them over the next few years. So hopefully that means they'll have a pipeline to get things out relatively quicker after that, too. I don't know. Maybe I'm hopeful. But I'm still playing this significantly later than uh, <laughs> I probably should have been. Um, that I probably should be playing it since I first started it, so it's okay. I've got time. Half a day passed in the blink of an eye. I, I, I own both the yeast and uh, it's East or Wise, I never remember. I bo I own both eight and nine of those, so. If I want to do more Falcom stuff, I've got it, at least. Five towering spires have appeared throughout uh, Erebonia, as well as a massive floating stronghold. At first, the people fell into a panic, but announcements from the Imperial government eventually calmed their unrest. And so, th though some did so with exhausted resignation, and others with an eerie sort of excitement, all turned to face tomorrow's coming war. Are we going to be able to even <sighs> stop stuff before? I'm guessing we need to basically get onto that place and fight our way up. That's how a lot of these end. There's a really cool thing in Mabam. Then again, a bunch of spires showed up, so salt pillars was the implication at least. Uh, those in the nonsense too quickly sent out an emergency message to all their allies. Together they worked tirelessly, attempting to make sense of the situation as much as possible. If I was Calvert and not knowing what was going on with that, I'd be shitting my bands like, the fuck, they already got all this shit going on. What the hell is that thing now? As a result, they concluded that the ancient floating fortress had appeared it's part of the final stage of the Empire's Curse. Well, it sounds like it was made by the gnomes. It's not like a remnant corpse of the Great One or something like that. Or maybe it is, I don't know. Maybe they tried to recreate the Great One way back when. And maybe it's like a vessel for it to control when all things come together into one. Its powerful energies would further twist and warp people's minds in order to drive them to endless war and bloodshed. So we're saying it's literally just an amplifier for the curse itself. In addition, the true nature of the numerous white spires was instantly clear to those with ties to the church. Like Josette. They were a nearly identical they were nearly identical to the salt bale. Did I get the name wrong? I might have. Uh, the product of singularity and the cause of the North Ambrian disaster 28 years ago. Mm. It was hypothesized they were created from residual matter of the original salt pail that had remained underground. W what does that mean? They were created... Created by who? When? Are you saying they grew really fast right there? From some remnants or are you saying someone found that made something in the same way that the big floaty eye fortress thing uh, appeared they were just and then they were placed in places 
However, unlike the original salt pail, these new ones did not convert the surroundings into salt. Rather, they appear to be spiritually linked to the floating fortress. A multi-layer barrier was also observed surrounding the fortress, with initial analysis revealing it to be completely impenetrable. Unless we ram the pantagruel into it. If we plan out the ramming of the pantagruel into something beforehand, we can make sure almost no one's on board and no one needs to die. <laughs> Operation Yormigander showed no signs of slowing, but the resistance represented by Neil Mirage was also gathering momentum. Calvert, Liberal, and Remiferia mustered their forces, along with support from the Vison army. The time for the continent's two great powers to clash draw near, uh, drew nearer and nearer, the fate of the world hanging in the balance. Oliver, Green, and the rest of the Radiant Wings would not stand idly by and watch fate unfold, however. As they were trying to decide the best course of action, they received an unexpected message from an old friend. Cool. It was George. He had called to them, uh, he had called to fill them in on what was happening. The massive object that had appeared over the Osculiad Basin was an ancient superweapon of the Gnomes, the Tuatha de Danan, otherwise known as the Imperial Fortress. It was an airborne structure from before the Great Collapse that had been hidden away in the space-time distortion caused by the Great One's birth. Space-time distortion caused by the Great One's birth. Okay. Uh, for the past millennium, the Gnomes had been carrying out large-scale renovations of the fortress. It had been converted to connect to the pales and interface with the curse through them, turning it into the ideal stage for the rivalry of the Seven. It was there they intended to hold the final rivalry once the Great Twilight had reached its climax. So is it like a tuning? So are the pales just acting as like tuning forks or something like that? All the curse stuff happening in the area gets resonated either to or from it to increase the level of conflict and whatnot, even more, something like that. All for the sake of reforging the Great One. However, though it was faint, a single spark of hope yet remained. The members of the Raiding Wings gathered together, joined by the Keepers and Elf from Mirage. I mean, it's still, they want to do the rivalries, it's still, we still would just go and try to win the rivalries, right? That's our whole thing. We just need to win. Uh, and together they began devising an all-or-nothing plan to combat the dire situation before them. So, it was on the eve of the clash between Yomigana and Miyamiraj, a third operation was born. The course of action decided. All those involved gathered together at a certain location in Crossbell. Da, 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 the Eve of War. At <laughs> Michelle, I wonder what. <coughs> Why, game? <laughs> that <laughs> sounds silly. I'm sorry. Oh, it's a good thing these, like, boat-like ships can dock in water. That makes, uh, docking them all relatively easy, all things considered. <laughs> Still, though. Is it closed, at least? It looks like it. We decide to make Michelin Wonderland the final bastion of humanity 
that would wait out the war and be a new hot spot for growth and splendor in the new world. I don't know. I'm guessing this is just a convenient place for everyone to get to. And I'm gonna guess they're putting a barrier around it a la uh, the witch's village. Okay. It does look like we have defenses, at least. For this meeting of... I guess the mines? very well. Thanks for your help, everyone. It's not half bad if I do say so myself. Good work. We should be thanking you guys. You're the ones who did the heavy lifting. I still find it pretty hard to believe you were able to make a barrier over all of Michelin. It's something that could only be accomplished through combining the witch's spells, our stigmas, and the Merkaba. Not to mention the raw power of two divine knights. And then we were able to convert the Pantagruel's orbital energy into mana to sustain the barrier. Great! Ha ha ha! Such beautiful teamwork! If we can do something like this, the sky's the limit! We ain't exactly here for a team-building exercise, you know. In any event, the barrier should hold. At least for tonight. It'll be able to absorb a few hits from any railway cannon shots that come our way. Not that we'll need to worry much about them given they'll be busy with the war for the time being. I'm sure as far as the Chancellor is concerned, we're simply some minor rabble beneath his notice. He probably sees us as nothing more than the opening act to the Great Twilight. <laughs> opening act nothing? Doesn't he know we're the main event? Yeah, that feels about right from her. Oh, hey there, everyone! Also, you guys have been sidelined way too much to start claiming main event during this one. Good to see you guys. How are your rooms? Did you drop off all your things already? Yeah. Honestly, I was blown away by how ritzy this place is. I can't believe we have it all to ourselves. <laughs> right? Even locals like us don't get many chances to stay here. Hmm. The last time was when Mariabelle invited us after the trade conference. Ah, oh, man. That seems like it was a hundred years ago. Thinking back, it's kind of a bittersweet memory. We still had a lot of fun, though! Looking around, we've got quite the crowd here now. Yeah, and a lot of us are from Thor's, too. We might as well live it up, then. This is our last night before everything goes down, after all. You're right. Tomorrow's when everything will be decided. Our future rests on the success of Operation Shining Steel. Shining Steel. Neat. Though honestly, it's still a pretty dicey plan. Who, who is the person that gets to name the operations? That that feels like an Oliver name. It feels a bit like an Oliver name. A few hours ago. <sighs> so, this is Operation Shining Steel then? After reviewing the whole plan like this, it seems more reckless than it does bold. 
We may not have much margin for error, but I think this could actually work. So basically, we're gonna get a bunch of teams to raid all the salt pails at once, put them out of commission, and then have the courageous two charge into the fortress while its barrier is down. That about sum it up? Yes, but there's little chance that things will go so smoothly. I'm sure we'll have a number of unforeseen circumstances to deal with. Our top priority, however, is making sure the Divine Knights and Class 7 get to the target. Why don't we lower the barrier of the fortress, then ram the Panzer Girl? I'm not even joking at this point. That feels like it would be very effective, at least as an opening act. That's right. So even if something goes awry and the Courageous 2 is unable to land, we can continue with the plan. As long as Reen and the others can successfully board the fortress in time, we still have a chance. Our foes will try to end the rivalry of the Seven as the Great Twilight reaches its climax. If we manage to seize control of the rivalries before then, however, we may be able to prevent them from achieving their goals. At this point, they think they've already won. It's likely they'll welcome Instructor Reen since they need him to finish the rivalries. And that will be our chance. That's all fine and good, but what about the salt pails? One glance and you could tell they're bad news. They're giving off one hell of an ominous vibe. Yes. They seem to be pulsing with energy from the lower planes. And this same energy is what's letting them act as singularities, making them nearly impregnable. Further, given the devils that have been appearing all over lately. Ooh, we're gonna acknowledge that? I get the feeling we may find even worse things protecting each of the pales. Yes. It's something we'll need to be prepared for. Well, if we know what we gotta do, then all that's left is to go do it. That's right. It's our turn now. You can leave one of the salt pails to the Laverum team. We just gotta decide on which of us is going. Same for us in the SSS. As members of the Radiant Wings, let us help clear a path for you and the others. Estelle, Lloyd, everyone. Aw, you guys. Guess we should have seen this coming, huh? You can count on us, too. What? No, Duvali's not gonna be with me? Duvali? No. No. Are you sure? Since my lord's passing, I've managed to clear my mind a bit. The time has come for the Stallridder to unite once more, to see our lord's will done. Our lord saw fit to grant you her power. It's our duty to carry her torch to light your way. All of you. Don't forget to save some seats for us, huh? We'll be teaming up with those Stallridder gals, if that's okay. The boss would have wanted as much from us. Sino, Leo. Sheesh. This is one hell of a lineup. In that case, you can add Sharon and me to the list of volunteers. As maid of the Reinford family, I would be honored if you would allow me to fulfill this particular role. <laughs> Angie! <gasps> you too, Sharon? Lady Angelica and I have also suffered at the hands of our foes. After careful discussion, we have decided it would only be appropriate to return the favor. From what I hear, Lieutenant Colonel Mueller will be returning to the Courageous 2 tomorrow. I figured I'd leave the steering up to the expert, so I can get back to kicking some ass. Sharon, Angelica... Then you can count me in too! Can't let you do that, Toa. We need you here. Also, we didn't make combat abilities for you in this game. You've got both the Courageous 2 and the entire operation to look after. Angelica's right. I'd very much prefer you to remain at your post. I'll be on the bridge as well. But even then, I suspect we'll have our hands full manning the air defenses. I... understood. There's no need for concern, Toa. We're all in this together. Every one of us has their own part to play. Thank you, both of you. But still, we can't just send them out by themselves. And I guess you'll just have to let me join them. Interesting. Will we get to play as George? 
We get George to play us too? Huh, so that's why you two were acting weird. I only say that because the fact that they're not letting Toa go, but letting Angelica and Sharon go makes me feel as though the limit is really playable characters, yeah? I'm sure you must think I have no right to come back like this. At least for that group, at least. I can't possibly make up for everything I've done. But I'm going to help anyway. Because... I'd rather not get the same failing marks Franz did. Hmm. George? So, that makes three. Not as many as I'd like, but... Then allow me to lend you a hand. Grandmother! I fulfilled my duty as a witch, and Leanne has passed. Now that I have played my part, I may as well bloom one final time for you young folk. Worry to add my strength to that of the Ravner girl, a former gnome, and the Rhineford maid. Would that be sufficient? <laughs> That'd be more than enough. But if it's possible, I'd prefer to have the curvier version of you come with us. Angie, I don't think now's really the time. <laughs> it would be our pleasure to have you accompany us, Lady Roselia. For crying out loud. We now have four groups. Our forces have expanded considerably. But what about the last pale? You can leave that one to me. Just let her go solo. P Principal Le Guin? No, not Barty, it's not Mueller, just her solo. Aren't you supposed to be focusing on all that Meal Mirage stuff? Certainly. But the plan has always been to leave the first day of the operation in Wallace's hands. I'll be taking over tomorrow, once the war begins. Lieutenant General Bright anticipates that both sides will spend the first day scouting, with perhaps a few light skirmishes at best. Presumably, General Van Dyke will mobilize the Imperial Army with a similar mindset. All bets are off once that second day is, however. Odds are, all eight battlefronts will erupt into all-out carnage at about the same time. Well, that gives us a little bit more time to stop mass death. The Imperial Army will likely be forced to a halt in both Liberal and Remiferia. You can expect they'll deploy their strongest armored divisions, the third and fourth included, at that time. <sighs> yeah, I thought that might be the case. And the reason you're helping us out is so things don't get to that point, right? Perhaps. It should be a suitable warm-up for the decisive battle to come, at least. Though, of course, I won't be going it alone. Aww. Oh, that's a really good group. <laughs> it's as the General says. We, too, will be assisting you. For the first day, anyway. This will be my final duty as head of the Arsade School. I shall prove us worthy in succeeding the Sandlot Men. I don't know if I measure up to these three, but... This is as good a chance as any to make up for all the time I've lost. Father! Toval! <laughs> I had a feeling Vita would show up to help. Can't pass up a chance to hug the spotlight, huh, Vita? <laughs> Show them what you can do, Zero Artisan. Excellent. There's a lot of people coming together. Thank you. We couldn't be more lucky to have the four of you with us. That goes for the rest of you, too. Estelle, Lloyd, Duvali, Angelica, Sharon, each and every one of you. Indeed. And with that, I hereby declare Operation Shining Steel officially underway. We fly tomorrow at noon, as Mil Mirage and the World Serpent begin their clash. We'll be rendezvousing with the rest of our allies in Michelin later today. This may be the last time we're all together, so we're planning to have a small celebration of sorts. We were hoping all of you could join us. Now, oh. oh, this is going to be the night before sort of thing, isn't it? Oh. Okay. No objection there. It would seem everything is coming along quite nicely. Yeah, this is the last place I expect to spend the night before a war. I still can't believe your dad booked the whole hotel out for us. And on a discount too. Wait, who's paying? Well... They weren't going to have any customers otherwise. It was kind of a win-win situation, really. I see. In other words, Mishi has no choice but to entertain me for as long as I crave. 
Okay, it's your time. Have some pity on the board chomp inside him, will ya? We've met the board chomp inside him. I actually think it was a pretty stand-up dude, if I remember correctly. It was just like a very different image. <laughs> I just wish to know how Richie and Shizuku could make it, too. Yeah, but at least we can look forward to seeing them after all this is over. Besides, Yona, Sully, and Cecil should be uh, arriving any moment now. Oh, it may please you to know, my father's operation was a success! Yay! Sort of anticlimactic in that reveal, but okay. So I heard from who? This is like the people you're talking to. <laughs> they say he's already started to come around too. Also, from who? Really? Already? Wow, that's great news! His Majesty has been on all of our minds. That he has. This should help bring uh, some hope back to the people. Hmm. What a wonderful relief. Right, Olivier? Quite so. I'll never be able to thank Dr. Silent enough. Sorry we're late. Mueller and wait, what's that face over there? Patty Cakes! I had no idea Father and Tova would be coming here. It's good to see you again, Divoli. What happened to Lady uh, Knights doing three? They're running a bit late. Same applies to the two from Zephyr. Uh oh, okay. Patty Case, you came all this way? Indeed. I shall be supporting Operation Shining Steel from the field. I plan to visit His Majesty on behalf of my father as well. Should time permit? I'm sure he'd appreciate that. We should request an audience of the Emperor ourselves, no? Probably, but it might be kind of tough. <laughs> That's a sign. We have yet a few more arrivals to introduce. Ones that proved a tad more troubling to arrange. Come on, you guys, no need to be shy. Pardon us. It's good to see you all again. Huh. D Dad? Oh no. George is. I mean, he basically said. But what are you doing here? George. So you came too. Like I said on the call, I still don't know if I really deserve to be here. But once the operation starts tomorrow, I won't be moving out with anyone here other than Angie. I get selfish. I get how selfish this might sound, but I just wanted to see you all one last time. Oh, George, you big dumb lug. Yeah, what a soppy idiot. <laughs> but he's our soppy idiot. George. <laughs> what a soft-hearted disciple I found myself. Jeez, you guys are just as melodramatic as Class 7 is. Well, I'm surprised you managed to make it here, Mr. Bright. It's more than surprising, it's practically unbelievable. Does that mean you're all done preparing for Mule Mirage, then? That's right. I'd like to say all is well, but that may be a bit preemptive. All in all, I'd put our chances at 60% against us. Though, with General Van Dyke as our opponent, even that level of optimism may be misplaced. I see. We believe in you, Dad. Yes, we're very grateful for all you've been doing. I thought my work as a commander of tomorrow's operations is concluded for tonight. I thought perhaps I'd come and visit. Both to wish you every success in Operation Shining Steel, and to see where I might lend you our aid. Ah, and one other thing. I have a message to pass along. Hmm? Oh, how serendipitous it is that I'll promise in... By... Mint? That's just a word. Oliver would never make up a word. Should arrive so soon. We do have a, a few guests we're still waiting on, but what say we all head to our venue for now? Our message involving Reen is what Cassie said, I'm guessing, from the Master. Sure thing. Grandfather finished preparing the guest house for us earlier. Speaker McDowell did all that for, uh, just for us. It's very kind of him. I have to take the opportunity to thank him in person at some point. Well, what are we waiting for? Let the celebration begin. <coughs> Did we get a 3D inside to it? At some point? I remember it being really nice and having, like, waterfalls and actually being, like, one of the nicer, like, design interiors in the series that, like, at least to my aesthetic taste. 
And thus, the guest house of Michelin's Villa Grounds did the send-off party for Mule Mirage commence. Class 7's new and old sat among their fellow instructors and alumni and classmates. The Berlin Embracer's special sports section, members of the Church next clan alike, and even those visiting from Calvert and Remiferia, had all come on, uh, had all come as one to join in the festivities. Together they mingled, if only for tonight, enjoying food and conversation in the warm comforts and camaraderie. Last were exchanged on the eve of wars they each shared in their hopes of what the morning would bring. And then... Oh, I want to see inside there again. I'm legitimately disappointed. Did they put up the lights on, like, Christmas lights on the nonsense? What? Or are those normally there? I don't feel like I've seen them before. Festive lights, I better, better said. Oh, that's pretty cool. Reminds me of, uh... Oh, she can just float around randomly now? That's, uh... Not how I interpreted that manifesting. <laughs> okay, okay. Are we actually going to be able to go do th like things of these? Honestly, since they sort of cut down the mirror place, I'm a little not expecting it to be that, uh, you know. Everyone's still got plenty of party left in him. Nice so young, after all. Plus, we got the whole park to ourselves, too. That does remind me. Why don't you give us a performance, Elliot? Yeah, I've still got goosebumps from the last time I heard that violin of yours. Really? I, I mean, I'd love to, but why would I even play? Hey, wait a minute. Where did Eustace run off to? I believe he went to go find Milliam earlier. That does sound, uh, that does sound like something he might do. This is their last night together, after all. Y yeah. That does make sense. Looks like George and Jellica are getting in some time alone themselves. Has there really been... I guess there's a little bit, but okay. That said, don't you guys have any special summons of your own that you're spending the evening with? Says you, Joshua, who's not currently with Estelle. Quality guy time is great and all, but tonight could be, you know, the night you know. <laughs> Lloyd, who are you going to spend your night with? Why don't you tell us? Okay, okay. We all see what you're getting at. They do have a point, though. Yeah, now he's got me thinking. Well, I know a certain guy who's got more uh, to think on than all of us combined. Indeed, rather irritating when you put it that way, though. Who might you guys be talking about? Uh... Why, why are you all looking at me? Congrats, Lloyd! You're not the most clueless guy in the room for once. I'm nowhere near as bad as him. At least I have some self-awareness. I'd say you're about the same, but... Green does have quite a few more options. Ha! <laughs> uh, I bet that's easy for you to say, lover boy. In any case, it's just as you said. This very well me may be our final night. You especially will have more than a few things to make clear tonight. Yeah, I bet you've had a ton of girls confess their love to you as it is already. Uh, I mean, well, that technically has happened. Either way, you won't want to wake up tomorrow with any regrets. Quite right. Perhaps I too should take this night to tell Elise how I feel. I agree. You 
What? But, what, Swaza? Why? Does this mean you finally approve? Just don't push your luck. Y y yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Anyway, let's go enjoy whatever evening we got left. Should be plenty for us to do between the beach and the park. They're also keeping the stores here in the center open for us, too. Still a little fun to be had, with or without that special gal. Oh, before I forget, my dad has something he wants to tell you, Breen. You should go and see him when you get the chance. Uh, yeah, sure thing. Anyway, you guys have a good time out there. We will. See you later. Oh, boy. Well, it's very, very, you know, subtle about the intentions of what this upcoming segment's going to be about. Now, game, explain the mechanics to me. I've been trying to keep my role sacrifice on my mind, but... If I was right, I don't want to end this without, uh, with any regrets. I need to find the opportunity to speak with Cassius, too. And with Valimar. Now that we finally can again. Then there's these tickets his highness gave me. I may as well use them all I can. I'm gonna make sure to give everyone here my thanks and, of course, get my feelings out in the open. Tickets feel so familiar. Evan died. Night of promises. Got it. Five. These special tickets can be used during the send-off party to participate in various attractions with a special companion of your choice. You can deepen bonds like normal bonding of, uh, events. Choosing a member you formed a close bond with may trigger a special event in the future. The companion you can uh, you can invite changes depending on the attraction, so use your tickets wisely. You can progress the main storyline once you have used all five tickets and seen all major events. Okay, so I can't accidentally do stuff. Oh. Oh my goodness, Milliam's in here now. Yes, she obviously gets that. Oh my goodness. The hat does work on her, though. So... Doobie, 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 doobie. There you are, doobie. I do just like it. Personally. I don't know. It, it, it sort of hits a lot of my, uh... Milestones in terms of... Taste. Oh, I didn't even realize he got different ones. Tempting, but I actually do like his, like, standard royal style better than his sky stuff. I don't have the nostalgia tinge that is, uh, determining what I'm, uh, thinking is a good idea for that. Okay, uh, I'm at least going to save, and then... Oh, hey. I just want to thank you before I save and leave. Shrek Doreen, I hope you enjoy this special night at Michelin. We're really enjoying ourselves. I don't know how to thank you for letting us have uh, the run of such a wonderful resort. <laughs> don't worry about it. We haven't been getting ma uh, many visitors recently anyways. And to tell the truth, I actually became acquainted with the traveling bard Olivier during one of his visits to Crossbell. After hearing about the situation, I want to do what I could to help. See, his highness does have a lot of connections. <laughs> he does indeed. You've done me a great service just by looking after Yuna. Please try and relax tonight. Uh, thank you, I will. Well, I'm gonna at least restart the recording since I have no idea how long it's gonna take me to do the rest of this stuff, so I'll be back 